America's righteousness in the world because we're acting like a superpower inert with the right responsibilities. Do not go in. What was this war about? We've gotten rid of Rumsfeld. We're almost through Cheney. We got rid of Libby. What's left but Halliburton profits? Yeah. What's left? Now we know what it's about. It's not military reasons. Joint Chiefs of Staff want out. Generals want out. Republicans want out. Hawks want out. Everyone stands with San Francisco today. You were right, it was wrong, and let's get out of there! Yeah. Let's get out of there! And in the United States Congress today, there are 90 members of the Get Out of Iraq now. And that means that Congress is putting a timeline on the plan. We oppose the surge, and we are insisting there's a timeline out. That's the crucial card. What time do we get out? And now, brothers and sisters, it's because of you, the Bay Area, California, that this nation will get a timeline and get out. Yeah. And come home. Yeah. And work at home. And help us at home. And help us build our hospitals and our schools. And help us fix our country. Yeah. And help us spend the money here. And not being imperialistic abroad. Yeah. So I say to you, I am proud to be a Californian. I'm proud to be your senator. I'm proud to have worked with MoveOn.org and all progressives across the nation to mobilize the people to let the voices be heard. And I don't care who you are and what you believe then, we all believe now. 85% of America, get out, get out now, and let us insist that the voices resonate from here, California, San Francisco, and California Bay Area values which in fact respect life and independence and we are not about to continue to allow Halliburton to throw billions of dollars in cash in the street and make money at the expense of human lives and our lives and our future. I thank you. I love you. I join you. I join the country. We join the country today. And all over America, people are speaking out, and you had the courage to do it first. You had the courage to do it first, and our voices, therefore, are the most valiant and noble. I thank you very much for allowing me to be part of you. April 15th, Jeff. Yeah. Our next speaker is Kia Coldera Plain, San Francisco Lowell High School student and organizer of Revolution Youth. She recently organized 700 students in anti-war protests for the February 15th Movement's Revolution. Kia. Hello. There's nothing you can do that will help accomplish anything. These words sting like a slap in the face. Not because I believe them, but that those who tell me about this, they believe them. These are the words of the ignorant. These are the words of those who have not looked around them to see what is taking place in our world. An immoral war, and thousands, if not more, calling for an end to it all. Many people have fed me these words in conversation lately, perhaps trying to shut me down. However, I will not be stopped. Yeah. I stand for the youth. We who are watching our friends, our brothers and sisters go off to Iraq, some returning home with images engraved into their minds that, will never, that they will never forget. Thousands coming home wounded, some with only half their brains or one arm left. And of course, there are the 3,000 and more to come who make up the number of men and women killed in the war on Iraq. 3,000 men and women. 3,000. 
They are often compared to those soldiers who fought 40 years ago in another war, Vietnam. Senator Hagel, in an interview with the New York Times, described these men as the forgotten group in all wars, that is, the person at the bottom who is expected to fight and die and has very little to say in policy, even tactics. If more troops are deployed in the coming months, the Iraq War will be the third longest in American history, ranked behind the Vietnam War and the American Revolution. Now is this worth it? No! no. Is it worth it to throw away thousands of young men and women's lives for a war most of the population no longer supports? Is that worth it? No! No! We want an end to this war, and we want it now. We must voice this sentiment and make it clear to Pelosi that we do not support this war and that we will not rest until it ceases to exist. Not one more dollar spent for death. Not one more death is acceptable. Congress saw our movement on February 15th. Pelosi saw our petitions calling for an end the following week. Forty years ago, Vietnam ended due to mass opposition to the war then. Now it is time for history to repeat itself for the better. I call upon each and every one of you to help bring our brothers and our sisters home. I call upon you to be a friend, unjaded, educated, and on what is taking place in the world and using your voice. Together, we can make a difference and we can succeed. Thank you. And with the Ads and Coalition. It's a beautiful day in San Francisco. It's a beautiful day for love. It's a beautiful day for peace. It's a beautiful day to stop the war. It's a beautiful day to bring the troops home. It's a beautiful day to impeach George Bush. In Iran, just like everywhere else in the world, just like how we're doing here today. Power to the people! Right now, I'd like to introduce to you Joshua Castro, representing the Asian Pacific Islander Coalition Against War, the International League of People Struggle, and Bayan USA. Come on up here, Joshua. Woo! What's up, San Francisco? Can I get a wet one? How y'all doing? Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon to all of you. The Asian Pacific Islander Coalition Against War, the International League of People's Struggle, and Bayan USA, together as a strength and unity contingent, have joined together today on the fourth anniversary of the American war in Iraq to denounce American imperialist domination all over the world. As we already know very well, the people of Iraq continue to suffer miserably under the brutal occupation of their homeland by United States military. The country's infrastructure, or what is left of it, is in shambles. Its new democracy is nothing more than yet another example of an American puppet government. And as we already know, over a million Iraqis have died and countless others continue to live in agony. As the strength and unity contingent, however, we know that Iraq is not the only place affected by the U.S. war on terror. We must remember that there is still a war going on in Afghanistan. We must remember how the fascist regime of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo has murdered over 800 activists in the Philippines. We need to understand how the recent free trade agreement in South Korea will certainly bring about untold suffering to farmers and working people. Remember the inhuman U.S.-funded Israeli occupation of Palestine? Pay attention to the increased U.S. militarization in Guam. Remember the disdainful negligence, negligence of, US, of the U.S. against the victims of Hurricane Katrina. And most certainly, do not forget the shamefully hypocritical anti-immigrant legislation targeting our friends and family in the United States. We appeal! To all of you here today, to please understand that the end of the war in Iraq will not mean the end of this madness. War, poverty, and all forms of oppression will only end with the complete defeat of imperialism. So in unity with people, with the people of Iraq and oppressed peoples all over the world, U.S. out of Iraq, Afghanistan, Palestine, and the Philippines, no more scapegoating immigrants, down with U.S. imperialism! Right on, Joshua. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. The 
It is our young people that are fighting this war. It is our young people that are coming home in body bags. It is our young people that are coming home injured. We need to hear the voices of our young people. We are the world. We are the deciders. Our next speaker is Mark Ostapiak. He's an organizer for socialist action and an activist with the mobilization to free Mumia Abu-Jamal and the Lee Stewart Defense Committee. Mark. How's everybody doing out there? All right. The United States government has been hyping this surge. They're saying that it's bringing calm and peace to Baghdad. But there's no calm and peace. They're slaughtering people all over Iraq right now. There's 650,000 Iraqis and 3,200 US GIs that have been killed since the invasion began four years ago. And what's it all for? It's for oil, it's for profit, and it's for domination of the Middle East. And what about this so-called surge? That's a term, surge, that they use to fool people into thinking that this is going to be a quick and temporary operation. But there's 30 to 40,000 troops heading there right now, and U.S. Defense Secretary Gates has said that the U.S. military is going to be in the Middle East for decades to come. This is nothing but a plan for long-term and intensified murder. Stop the war! Bring our troops home now. Say no to war. Say yes to peace. Peace, not shattered lives. What do we want? Injustice. When do we want it? Now. Our next speaker is Silvio Rodriguez. And Silvio is from the Party for Socialism and Liberation, one of the member organizations of the Cancer Coalition. Thank you. It's great to see people gathered here today. This is the fourth time that people across the United States and around the world are coming together to mark the anniversary of this brutal and criminal occupation. This is a war where the people of Iraq are really bearing the brunt of it. 650,000 Iraqis are now dead. Over two million of them have been made refugees in other countries and another two million are displaced within Iraq. The infrastructure of the country is absolutely destroyed. The medical and educational systems are in ruins. This war is not just a war against Iraq. It's part of a greater imperialist plan of the United States to gain control over the entire Middle East. And like every single imperialist war, it's not a war just against targets abroad, but it's also a war against working people at home. This war has now cost close to half a trillion dollars. Half a trillion dollars that could have been going to health care, to education, to uh, other social programs that are very much needed here at home. Just earlier this month, I read a story in the newspaper about this boy in Maryland, 12-year-old African-American boy who died because he had a mouth infection that spread to his brain and it did not get operated because his family could not afford the $80 it would have cost to treat him. They didn't have health care. That boy is a victim of imperialist war. Okay? We have kids right now in Oakland whose schools can't afford books, whose schools are facing the possibility of getting shut down, those kids are fighting against imperialist war when they fight for their education. Okay. Each and every one of us here who has to work for a living, those of us who are struggling to raise a family, all of us, we are fighting against imperialism. <laughs> I want to say, I want to speak in particular to the people who are here coming to their first demonstration, people who are new to the movement, 
people who are angry and frustrated at what's going on and who are asking themselves, what can we do to stop this war? And I really want you to take a moment and look around you. And I wish you could see what I can see from the stage right now because I can see people for several blocks away. And keep this in mind, it's not Congress that's gonna stop this war. It's not the politicians, it's the people who are here. People make history. But in order to make history, people must be organized. The struggle is not going to end today, and I invite everyone here to continue fighting with us. The Party for Socialism and Liberation believes we're not just fighting against the war, but rather that the war is a symptom of a system that is driven by profit. Profit that tramples everything else where human life is worth nothing. We want you to fight with us. Please come to our table at Civic Center. We're gonna be there. We're having a socialism conference on April 21st. Come talk to us. Everyone can become an organizer. Let's bring the troops home now and end imperialist war. Thank you. Hasta lograr la paz y justicia y legalización para todos. Si se puede. This way we will shake the resentment and demanding peace. We want to stop until obtaining peace, justice, and legalization for all. Yes, we can. Our next speakers are Evelyn Ramiro, Evelyn E. Ramiro, Evelyn and Ramiro, and they bring us voices that speak for those who can't be heard. And they tell, say you can check out for more information, migrantwatch.org. Evelyn and Ramiro. Migra. Oh, Migra. Migra, M-I-G-R-A, okay. of the government cannot bring the times back to slavery. Before, when our black brothers and sisters were brought here, physically brought here, now what they are trying to do is mask their greedy intention with a new genre of slaves who are controlled by economic intervention. Our fight here is to remember that this war in Iraq also affects illegal immigrants and immigrants, residents, everyone who lives here, allies, everyone. And for this exact cause, we bring to you Migra Watch. Please repeat after me, Mexica Tiawi! My name is Ramiro, we're from the Watts of a Proper Race, and we're here today to denounce the Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> People be saying, what does the immigration issue have to do with the war in Iraq? Well, I'm here to tell you that it has everything to do with the war in Iraq, because ICE, or what I like to call the Pinche Migra, is under the Department of Homeland Security. And it is because of the war on terror that the Department of Homeland Security was created. And it is because of this war on terror that the war in Iraq exists. So there is a connection between the immigration struggle and the struggle to end the war in Iraq. You gotta free your mind and think outside of the box. It's not just end the war in Iraq, it's end the war against all people of color around the world. So we are here to say that we are working in our neighborhood in Watsonville. We are working to be organized for the next time that these pigs, that these migra pigs come to our neighborhood. We're going to be organized. We're going to be waiting for them. We invite you to join our struggle, migrawatch.org. Thank you very much. And you know, Native people can tell you about surges and occupations. We've been experiencing it for hundreds of years here, and we can tell you it's not going to work. He's Supervisor Tom Amiano.
to war and occupation. Just that he needs support, that we need a lot more Aaron Watadas. He's the man who's doing what Thoreau said in explaining his vote, his vote by staying in jail, by going to jail against the Mexican War, an earlier war of aggression. He said, cast your whole vote, not a strip of paper merely, but your whole inference, influence, influence, your whole influence. That's what the senators who are not filibustering against this war. The congressmen who and women who are voting fully to fund it while they protest and say the blame is on Bush, that's not true. Every congressman who refuses to not to vote, who refuses to vote for the Lee bill, the Woolsey bill, the Kucinich bills, is funding the war and is as much to blame for the continuation as Bush and Cheney. So, they need to be told they will be facing primary opposition next year. Even if they're in safe Democratic, safe Republican seats, their seat will not be safe if, uh, if they don't get straight on this. Here are the consequences politically if they of taking blame for ending a war. That's what they don't have the moral courage to do now, and we've got to demand that. But the other thing that the founders left us, of course, is impeachment. Table, let me hear it. Where is impeachment? On the table. Where is cutting the funds on Iraq? On the table. Tell that to our Nancy Pelosi and we'll end this war. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. Tell us the truth about war and peace. World, we are the world and we are the deciders. Let's thank the veterans for coming out one more time. Let's hear it again. Are you against the war in Iraq? Are we going to stop the war in Iraq? We're going to keep marching till we stop the war in Iraq. Today is not our last day in the streets. We will keep on marching. And the veterans will keep on marching with us and labor and the youth and people of color, everyone affected by this war will march in the streets and we will stop this war. I'm honored to introduce to you now Mohammed Hanif. He is the director of the Muslim American Society's MAS Freedom Foundation, the Bay Area chapter. This is America's largest Muslim grassroots organization with over 50 chapters. Let's hear it for Muhammad. Before I start, I want to tell you that we have done this before and it, there's a lot of cost involved in this. So I want all of you to support this financially. You know, they have told you before, I want to tell you again, especially the Muslims, I want you guys to contribute as much as you can. You guys are clear on that? Yeah. All right. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Brothers and sisters, friends and enemies. Assalamu alaikum. May peace and blessings of God be on each and every one of you. And thank you for coming. Why are we here today? We are here because this war is not only illegal, but it is, it is immoral at its, at its deepest foundation. Divine law requires us to stand against man-made oppressive laws. Let us not forget the government has a history 
of putting fear in our hearts and then unconstitutionally taking away our civil and human rights. We have not forgotten the Sedition Act of 1798, the Smith Act of 1940, the Executive Order of 1942 that led to War Relocation Authority placing our Japanese brothers and sisters in concentration camps. No, we have not forgotten the McCarran Act of 1950s, nor have we forgotten effective death penalty and anti-terrorism act of 1995. And the list continues. But the government, the power holders, would like to tell you and scare you that some Muslim terrorist, quote unquote, Muslim terrorist is out there to get you. But the only real, organized, powerful, hegemonic terrorist organization that I see is the power holders in the White House. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, do not let them take away our civil and human rights. Let us all get together and bring about a positive political, social, ideological, and economic change to this miserable and our shared community. Let me clarify to our Muslim community that rallies, marches, have always been used in the America as a direct action component to facilitate change. It is our constitutional right, the right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government to redress of, to redress of grievances because of time. I will let you know that we will use this freedom to end this immoral and illegal war that is going on right now. Mass Freedom Foundation and its 55 mass chapters nationwide will not take back, will not take a back seat in the anti-war movement. It is our religious responsibility to stand for justice and against all forms of oppression. In conclusion, in conclusion, let me warn the American people, the administration, and President George, of George W. Bush that escalating the war to Iran is a great mistake. We, the peace-loving people, came and told you not to go to Afghanistan, not to go to Iraq, and you did. And today, you are being defeated, shamefully beaten, and you have no real strategy to get out. What makes you think you can do better in Iran? Let me also declare, let me also declare that the metaphysical, intellectual, and anti-oppression war has begun. And just like Patrick Henry, I will say, gentlemen, may, pe may cry peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war is actually begun. Is life so dear or or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains of slavery. Forbid it, almighty God, I know not what course other may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death.